so the Ender 5 S1 is a pretty good 3D printer, and right out of the box it's able to print at 300 degrees Celsius. But in order to print materials at these temperatures, you kind of need an enclosure. So let's install the one that Creality made for this printer and see if it's any good. And there's not really much in this box, just some acrylic sheets, hardware, and instructions. But first, for my least favorite part, removing all the paper from the acrylic. And luckily this all came off in just one piece pretty easily. But you can see once you have it off, it's this nice dark blue acrylic, which I actually really like the look of. But anyway, so let's check out the instructions. And it looks like I need to take these little blocks, put something inside of them, and attach them to the frame. And when it comes to actually doing that, there's these slots in the frame that it just kind of goes into, you turn it, and it locks in place. And when installing these, make sure the thicker side is pointing out. If you don't, your acrylic will come in contact with moving parts. And for the first panel, you're going to need seven of these. So I only have the top two in the right place. So I can attach my acrylic panel to them and start sliding the other ones up and down to align them properly. And if you're watching this video as a tutorial video, or if you've never worked with acrylic before, make sure you don't over tighten your bolts. Because if you do, you'll end up cracking it. When it comes to the other side, it's pretty much exactly the same. Besides, you need to remove the spool holder. And we're going to be reusing half of this. We need to get rid of the metal piece of this and use the one that came with the kit to mount it up properly. But according to the instructions, this is going to be one of the last steps. And now that we have both sides on, the back goes on next, and it goes on exactly the same way, so I'm not gonna waste your time showing you. So here it is all done. But the next thing I need to do is put in the stops for the door. And these just bolt into the frame using some T-nuts. And the top one went in with no problems. But when it comes to the bottom, there's this plastic cover that makes it impossible to install things. And it's not listed in the instructions to remove this. So I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut this a little bit and then use some tweezers to get it out. And once I get everything else installed, I'll cut this down and put it back. And with that out, this goes in with no problem. And now I just need to put all the hardware onto the door itself, which is pretty straightforward. And after doing all that and actually putting it into the machine itself, it says to tighten everything down, but you can't really do that with the door in there. So what I'm going to do instead of that is remove this one part on the door itself. That way I can tighten down the top and bottom part of the hinge, and then I can reinstall this with everything in place. And so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Here is the hinge part without the acrylic on it. If I was to open this so I can actually get to the bolt, it would cover it completely. And technically you could do this as the instructions tell you to. You just have to tighten everything up with the door shut from the top. But because I'm working on a workbench, this is really high up and I would need a stepladder to even get down to that point. And in my opinion, I think you should put the door on this first. Seeing that the frame is completely open, you'd be able to get to everything with no problem. And then when installing all the other pieces, you can just open the door to get to everything. But anyways, last thing I need to do is put the spool holder on. And there we go, the entire enclosure is installed. And you might notice, there is no top to this. And seeing that heat rises, most of your heat is just going to escape right through the top of this. Which would pretty much defeat the entire purpose of the enclosure. And when printing with this, you can see that the bed comes all the way up to the top. So the enclosure is not really doing all that much on the first couple layers. But I'm still going to try it out and see if it does anything at all. And to do this, I'm going to switch out from your standard PLA to some Polymaker ABS. Seeing that ABS really Really likes to warp as it cools if it cools too fast. And as of recording this, it is midwinter. So it's about 8 degrees outside and 60 degrees in my shop. And so far, it seems like everything is printing fine. And if we take a look at everything using my thermal camera, you can see that there's actually heat inside the enclosure, with certain points in here being around 95 degrees. And it looks like the air temp is anywhere from 75 to 80 degrees, which is a bit more than my 60 degree room temperature. And you can even see the hot spots on the outside of the enclosure. So surprisingly, it's actually holding heat. And in theory, the more the bed lowers, the more heat will be in the chamber and traveling up over the model, keeping it warm. And this print finished with no problems or warping. And because I'm using a flexible PEI build sheet, I'm able to just pop it right off. But I know this is a pretty simple and easy print, so I thought I'd try something a little bit more difficult. So this is the Torture Toaster from Clockspring 3D. This is a print-in-place model, so everything prints all as one thing, but there's folding doors, there's gears that work, and the toast even pops up. So it's kind of designed to test your printer and see how accurate everything is, and I think this model was designed with PLA in mind, seeing that's mostly what people use, and all I've seen it printed in. But we're going to be using ABS for this one. Also, this is not a quick print, it took 14 hours to complete. And I did check on it about an hour and a half into the print and there is a small failed point. I'm just going to remove this and let it go and see what happens. So here it is all done and these are the parts that didn't stick to the bed so I just removed them. But besides that it looks like it printed pretty nice and it was pretty easy to get off of the build plate as well. And you can see the three failed points right here, but it looked like it was able to correct itself and continue the print. Also, the bottom of this looks like it came out really nice and smooth. And pushing the toast button makes the toast pop up, and it goes back down with no problem. And the doors both work properly with the gears locking them in place, revealing the different tests that are inside of this. 
So it was able to print all the different angles, all the way up to 80 degrees, even though it doesn't look the best, but it's still surprising for ABS. And when it comes to the other side, it failed every single one of the clearance tests, seeing that they're all fused together. So even with those failures on the clearance test, this is still a pretty good print, and it shows what I can expect out of this printer when doing ABS. So surprisingly, this enclosure actually does work, and keeps heat in, and prevented my stuff from warping. And aesthetically, it looks pretty nice with the blue acrylic, and it matches the Howlett printer from Creality as well. But with all that being said, this isn't the perfect setup. Like I said before, the top is wide open, and one of their selling points to this enclosure is it'll keep dust out. I can see it cutting down on dust, but it's not dust proof by any means. But their claims of keeping the temperature consistent is pretty much spot on, as you've seen in this video. And as of making this video, these are available for pre-order and will ship next month. And that being said, this enclosure isn't cheap, coming in at $109. But this enclosure is nice and compact at least, compared to putting in something like this. Which does fully enclose the machine, and gives you an option for ventilation. And you can get one of these soft enclosures for around $80. So if you do have one of these printers, and you're looking for an enclosure, which one would you get? The acrylic one, or the soft tent? Let me know in the comments, because I actually want to know what your thoughts are on this. Well, I'm off to go find a ruby nozzle for this printer, so I can print in carbon fiber for a future project. So thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.